Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the problem of the 21st century. Yes, that is uh, waste disposal. For any doctor or a public health uh, professional, it is mandatory to have a basic knowledge about this topic. Why? Because uh, there are certain health problems or health hazards uh, uh, due to the accumulation of solid waste. Some of which are solid waste decomposes and favors the breeding of flies. It can attract uh, rodents and vermin. Pathogens which is present in the solid waste can be conveyed back to a uh, man through his food. There is also a possibility of water and soil pollution. And finally, heaps of refuse present an unsightly appearance and it can also cause bad orders or nuisance to the public. These are the problems pertaining to solid waste accumulation and improper way of solid waste disposal. Solid waste can be classified into garbage. So garbage are those solid waste which contains the main content is uh, kitchen waste or food waste. Then there is uh, rubbish are those waste which contains paper, plastic, wood, metal etc. Let's now see what are the sources of solid waste or it is also called as or known as refuse. The sources of refuse are there is something called as street refuse that is uh, those waste which are found in the street and which contains things like leaves, straw, paper, animal droppings etc. Market waste are those waste which are mainly found in market areas and this mainly contains uh, putrid vegetables and animal matters. Refuse which are found or collected from stables are known as stable litter. This mainly contains animal droppings, uh, leftover animal feeds, etc. Those waste which come out of industries or big factories are called as industrial waste. Uh, the, these uh, can be either uh, toxic materials or non-toxic materials. And waste generated from the household is known as domestic waste. For any waste, uh, solid waste disposal, the first step is storage and uh, collection of these waste. So for storage of these waste, it is best to have a galvanized uh, steel dust bin which has got a cover. And uh, right now, we also have color coded waste bins uh, in order to segregate these waste into degradable or non-biodegradable waste. Uh, latest, we have got paper sacks uh, which can be uh, inserted or kept inside the dust bins inside which all the waste are thrown or put into uh, when it is filled the whole paper bag is taken and discarded uh, after storage next step is uh, collection so the best method of uh, waste collection is house to house collection but uh, we need to have uh, a, a lot of re uh, resources especially man uh, or people in order to collect these waste and the method especially seen in urban areas is uh, throwing away or collecting all this waste into a public uh, waste cart. So this can be either open or a closed one. So it is best to have a closed uh, public waste cart in, in which all the waste are deposited into by the people living nearby. Now let's see what are the different methods of solid waste disposal. Starting with dumping. So you can see that uh, dumping is a method where waste are just dumped into an open area or land. So uh, this is one of the most uh, insanitary method of uh, waste disposal. After a certain period of time, this waste can undergo certain anaerobic uh, degradation process and later on the uh, volume of this waste or refuse will be gradually uh, decreased and gradually this will be converted into humus. The problem with the open dumping is that when it rains, these waste can be carried away into domestic or living areas. Uh, sometimes uh, when the wind blows, again this waste can be carried away to other areas. So this is not the uh, best method. Second method is control tipping. So control tipping is also called as sanitary landfill. In this uh, control tipping method, the refuse is compacted and placed in a trench. And later on this is covered with uh, earth or clay or soil at the end of the working day. There are three different uh, methods of control tipping. First one is trench method, then there is ramp method and finally area method. In the trench method, a long trench is dug usually or 2 to 3 meters deep and 4 to 12 meters wide depending upon the local condition. The refuse is compacted and covered with excavated earth. When the trench fills, it is covered with uh, earthen materials. 
Next method is ramp method. It is also similar to trench method. The only difference is that ramp method is suited in those places where the terrain is moderately sloping. And third one is area method. Area method is a method used to fill land depressions such as quarries or clay pits. You can use this area method in order to fill that pit. In area method, the refuse is deposited and compacted in uniform layers up to 2 to 2.5 meters. Each layer is sealed on its exposed surface with a mud cover at, of at least 30 centimeters thick. What happens after that? After we cover this refuse with uh, mud or earthen materials, there are certain chemical, bacteriological, and physical changes occurring at this buried refuse. Within seven days, the temperature and this buried refuse rises to over 60 degrees Celsius, which can kill the, all the pathogens and hasten the decomposition process in the refuse. And then it takes around two to three weeks to in order to cool down and normally it takes around four to six months for complete decomposition process of this organic matter. Next method is incineration. So in those places where there is no land available for uh, control tipping or any other method of uh, uh, solid waste disposal, we can adopt incineration. Especially uh, this is used in order to, uh, in order to dispose of certain hospital waste. So we have an incinerator inside into which this waste, solid waste is disposed and uh, it is burnt using some uh, fuel. This is not the best method because it generates lots of uh, uh, air pollution and toxic materials. Some toxic substance cannot be incinerated. Certain things like ash or burned wood uh, cannot be disposed of with this uh, incineration method. Next method is composting. So composting is a method of uh, waste disposal in which uh, we combine disposal of refuse and night soil or fecal matter together. In this method organic matter breaks down under bacterial, bacterial action resulting in the formation of relatively stable humus and uh, this material is a very good manure uh, so this can be used for cultivation purpose. There are two methods of composting which are widely used. First one is uh, Bangalore method and second one is mechanical composting. Bangalore method is also called as hot fermentation method. Uh, in this method the solid waste is converted into humus or manure by some anaerobic method. So in Bangalore method a trench is dug 90 cm deep. One 2.5 to 2.5 meter broad and around 4.5 to 10 meters long. In this trench, a layer of refuse is laid in for about 15 centimeters and uh, on which or over this night soil or fecal matter or sewage is added to a thickness of 5 centimeter. This is repeated on alternate layers with a proportion of 15 centimeters and 5 centimeters till the heap rises to 30 centimeters above the ground level. The top layer should be of refuse and at least 25 centimeter thickness. And finally this heap is covered with excavated earth and within, within 7 days as a result of bacterial action, considerable heat over 60 degrees Celsius is generated in the compost. This intense heat persists for about uh, 2 to 3 weeks and this serves to decompose the refuse and night soil and destroy all the pathogenic and parasitic organism. At the end of 4-6 to six months, it results in a well decomposed orderless material which can be used for, used for manure purpose. Next method is mechanical composting. Here also we combine refuse and night soil or sludge. So this method is used in places where large scale processing is uh, required. First, the refuse is cleared off uh, with uh, salvageable materials such as racks, bones, metal glass, metals, glasses, etc. And this refuse is then pulverized using a pulverizing equipment. So this uh, leads to decreasing the size of this material to less than 2 inches. After which this pulverized refuse is mixed with sewage or sludge or night soil. And this is kept or this is incubated for a certain period of time under certain temperature, moisture and pH. After, uh, after a certain period of around 4 to 6 weeks, this compost is 
converted into good manure which can be used for agricultural purpose. Next method is manure pits. Manure pits are used specially in rural areas. Instead of throwing away the household or domestic waste outside, uh, we can build manure pits using either mud or brick walls. In this uh, manure pits, we all the waste which includes garbage, cattle dung, uh, tree, uh, tree leaves, straws etc. can be uh, dumped each day. At the end of each day, this waste will be covered with earth and uh, we require two pits actually so that when one pit fills up, we can use the next pit. After the, the first pit has been filled up, we can expect the waste which is there in the first pit to be converted into manure within, the, within a period of 5 to 6 months time. So this method is uh, very effective and uh, easy to construct in rural areas. And the final method of uh, solid waste disposal is burial. So this is suitable in small camps. So in smaller camps uh, we can uh, dig a small trench of 1.5 meters wide and 2 meters deep. In this trench we deposit or we throw away all the waste, uh, solid waste each day. And at the end of uh, each day, this refuse is covered with 20 to 30 centimeters of earth or mud or clay. When the level of the refuse in the trench reaches 40 centimeters from ground level, the trench is filled with earth and compacted and a new trench is built. If the trench uh, length is 1 meter, it can be used for 200 persons for one week duration. So these are the different different methods of solid waste disposal such as dumping, control tipping, incineration, composting, manure pits and burial. So to conclude, for a success of any waste disposal in any area, uh, the best thing is to generate less waste. So be a minimalist and generate less waste. If this waste are properly disposed, we can prevent lot of communicable as well as vector bond diseases. A lot of resources are required for proper functioning of waste disposal system in any area. There should be government de determination and there should be fund provided and also resources by, like land or area, money, machinery as well as persons designated to take care of waste disposal system in any area. These are different things that you should know about uh, waste solid waste disposal. If you like this presentation, Please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.